What is going on, everyone? Commodore Lazio today brings you guys my live reaction to Ian Zero manga chapter 174. Now, the chapters finally come out. We are here today to read the latest installment in Hiro Mashima's up and coming new hit series. And of course, shout out to Azuki for providing the chapters week in, week out because they're doing God's work as this should be. And uh, I was like, man, I'm happy right now. Tuesday morning, the chapter's out. My internet's finally working. Uh, if you live in Canada, specifically in Ontario, Toronto, and stuff, We've been having like internet problems pretty much since like late last night going into the morning. Now it's finally all up and running. So I don't have to worry about no nonsense. I don't have to worry about mother nature. I can worry about the true mother of this series. Not the one outside this house right now probably causing chaos and stuff with the weather. Otherwise I'm on the suplex room. Anyways, we got a chapter to read. The crew of Edens about to make their escape afterwards from Blue Garden because Feather now has uh, intervened trying to take down uh, the crew specifically of course coming for shiki now that he has a position as one of the galactica and stuff um but there's a lot still that you know from that chapter we got last week and i really enjoyed that one because of how much now it offers us like new like things in the story that of interest building up to what's going to end up going down at lenard and stuff because of the stuff with uh, ziggy and his group and the inevitable fight to go down very soon you know Val C Justice for sure are gonna be there and everything so it's gonna be chaotic but I mean the stuff we learned about Xiaomei and her planet and stuff like how she can just basically change locations into different cosmos I think more than likely the next time we do see her it's probably gonna be in one of the cosmos that we've yet to go to and she'll most likely be there and then it's gonna be one of those scenarios where after that the next time we see her from beyond that point might be whenever we get closer to mother possibly but that's to be determined and then the stuff afterwards with connor's daughter now i'm saying this right off the bat i don't believe it's rebecca because i think if anything mashman would have made it more likely to kind of like give you hints of there is a connection there so i doubt that my two options right now currently i don't know i, I would love to do it in a video if you guys would care like get more like in-depth like discussion as to why i think the way i think right now but the first option i think it might be feather because we do know Feather is a human and stuff based on the descriptions and the volumes and what Mashman has put up before and stuff. So and if she does have like the blonde hair and stuff in the color scheme, which I have to double check, then she might be a candidate. The other one might be Amira from the intelligence agency and stuff. So I look, if her age does fit the description of what Connor's daughter is, she could be the wild card factor, possibly for uh, Connor's daughter and stuff. So yeah, those are my two options right now. I don't think it's Rebecca because, again, I feel like there's a connection between her and Noah already, and it'd be kind of weird just kind of like to do that afterwards. So for now, that's where I'm going with either Feather or Mirror. But let's see what's going to happen right now with Feather because she was out here stunning and profiling on her Ric Flair gimmick, but she's about to run into the crew, man. And I love the moment, though, too, with Rebecca when she was like, oh, don't worry, I'll take care of things, you make a run. Nah, there is no I in team. We do this together. We fight together. We escape together. She wears the pants in the family. I'll tell you that right now. Rebecca Blue Garden the Goat. So let's get into this chapter. Let's see what Mosh was cooking, man. 174. All right. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Hold on, Mosh, my man. It's, it's, it's so early in the morning. You can't be hitting me with these guys. Listen, I know what you're capable of when it comes to these cover pages. But, like, you need to chill, dude. This man put Sister Ivory up in the prison cell. But listen, this is, this I don't know, it's not Impel Down. This is not the prison cell you find at the downtown and stuff. And definitely those are not the prison clothes you'd be wearing and thing. But let me, let me just say it right now, man. If you got to throw me in the cell to handle it, it is what it is, man. <laughs> we have to do it. But listen, Ivory, she might be sick in the head in some cases, but... So am I. But anyways, let's get into this chapter, man. Chapter 174, mind getting out of the way. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, my mind itself should be out the way, but I do get what it's trying to mean. But uh, shout out to Ivory on this cover page. But yeah, I, I got to move on or I'm going to be sucked in. All right. So seeing the outside afterwards of the um, freaking what you call it? The, uh, the Starlight and stuff, basically the uh, guild. From outside, and you see right there, like Feather's entire army just chilled out and everything, all lined up in in, um, in a bunch of waves. You see the civilians, what's going on? The Interstellar Union Army. Did something happen at the guild? I guess some big shots of supervillains in there. 
Did I see any characters I might know from from uh, Fairy Tail this time around? Because I saw like Levy was in the last one, which is very, it angered me that I couldn't like I knew her design, but I couldn't tell you the name off the top because it's been so long. But anyways, but who's the hottie? That's a big shot from the government. I mean, see, like the streets know. The streets know. And listen, Feather, you may not have the emotions right now and stuff, but people know what's on the outside that counts, all right? You're going to meet them head on, Feather and her army. It'll all work out. Master and his crew are very strong. I love this, man. First of all, shout out to Happy with the savagery in the last chapter and everything. But, you know, that's, that's daughter, man. Like, yo, you have to protect her. Anybody looks at the wrong way, man. You know, is trying to sell her off or stuff, or you know, try and make her like do evil schemes in, in the Android uh, world. Look, man, we gotta smoke him. You know, we gotta protect our daughter, and then our crazy son Happy. But Feather has the same power I do. The people, the power to see people's locations. So yeah, so I want to clarify also one more thing too. I made a, a huge mistake last chapter saying that it was Hermit that had like the whole I God thing comparison stuff. It was actually Noah. So I just want to put that out there because I was just like thinking to myself now that Noah had the ability. In a battle, she can use it to predict her enemy's movements. Are you going to help us escape? Considering my position, I can't do that. <laughs> then shut up. <laughs> Yo, know, I said. <laughs> You're like, man, you can't do anything. But shut up. I don't want to hear your opinion. It don't count. I don't want to hear nothing from you. But I may be able to buy you a little bit of time. No thanks. It's the thought that counts. Come on, guys. We'll make a dash for the ship. Yeah, I, I respect that from Shiggy. Because Shiggy... Sh I see, I'm mixing everything together. That's how you know my mind's already been jumbled. It might be the multiverse is doing it to me. But let's be fair. There's a lot of things that are starting to merge together and stuff is doing it to me. But Shiki, Shiki, Crazy. But Shiki right now, I, I respect that though. Because it's like with him... If you could help us out in the beginning, don't, don't bother getting yourself in trouble or anything, man. It's our problem. We'll take care of it ourselves. So I respect that. See you later, Master Noah. You too, Mr. Connor. Farewell, Captain. Connor. Why the hell are you making that fit? You you asked to leave. You asked to to get away from the from thing. And I mean, okay, the, the view and stuff for Rebecca and uh, Hamura is stunning, but like I I don't know why that would be your reaction, but I doubt that it is, because there's something else you're probably noticing right now. It has to be something to do with feather. It has to be. You see your troops and stuff already lined up as uh, the crew's walking out. Here they come. It's Shiki and his crew. Fire. But there are still civilians in the area. Your bullets will not hit anyone. I can see it. That's actually kind of wild, man. I, I don't know. Like, listen. Feather, I know you can see into the future. Or you can tell the movements or whatever. You have, like, crazy observation hockey on category level and stuff. But that is kind of wild. They're like, just shoot, don't worry about it, I, I got this. And the thing is, too, if they're, if they're a liar, and you just get it done, like, bro, but no, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know, Feather looking kind of spooky. And they start shooting away. See, clean out through Laguna. The gunfire, it's already started. At least they should make a little spe a speech first. And cheeky right away. My boy, hands up, controls the gravity of the bullets as they're coming. And just sinks them all into the ground. So you see like a whole bunch like the trajectory and everything just coming down as he's going through. Not a single one able to land on him. The trajectories change. It's his gravity powers. I told you they would not hit anyone. The ballistics were a diversion. Keep fire. Oh god. You see the light in her eye right now. Keep firing. in, And you see like the lining too with the uh, marking and stuff. In the meantime, I will either connect to Team Alpha. I love Ether Connect. You see a whole bunch of them just like all lighting up. I love Ether Connect. Yeah, it lets us set, it lets us use Commander Feather's powers temporarily, seize them, and right away they're going for the fight. And yo, my boy Jim, oh, we got. Let's go. You're in the way. Just smokes one. Clean coming in and, and just listen. Protect clean 2022. I don't care. Look, we are still saying that. For as long as possible, all right? That's Jin's sister. We got to protect her at all costs, man. I'm sorry to do this. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, he might or might not. But just actually smoke the rest of the members there. I see Laguna coming in now with the water stuff. Hamura, absolute goat. That's like, look at that. Comes in with the run. Slice through. You just see nothing but the guns just all being diced up like salami. 
And Rebecca going off on the top row. Got the happy guns right there blasting away. Whoa, these guys are tough. They're coming straight for the Connect team. And then you see Vice right there. And Vice, well, nah, he, he kind of smooth. Well, hold on, bro. My boy. No, nah, you're not going for a dump right there. Can you do a little, little jack? You feel like got the gun and stuff, but still. I see it. I see your next move. And no, 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 nothing. Nothing. He gets a piece. I don't know if it's supposed to be part of the ether gear a little bit, but he just completely wrecked that dude. Ah, Capone. Did you say something? <laughs> Yo, nah, white, nah, white's raw as hell, man. Oh, that's it. You say something about me? Huh? Did you, did you want to talk? talk? You can talk now. You can talk now, but I, I don't know if you want to be doing that. And then you see right there, Shiki coming from the top row. Going for the frog splash. He's A Guerrero. And he comes down. Bang. Hand first to the ground, and you see completely the boom. The gravity just completely dominates everybody that's in the vicinity. How could they? The Connect team is. And Connor just keeps on looking out and stuff now that he's watching. Like, but for what reason, though? He, he has to sense some kind of premonition. Something is completely up right now. Is something the matter, Mr. Connor? Mm hmm. I heard that lot you were, save, were saving the planets with Zeke. I heard that lot were saving the planets was Ziggy invaded. They had to be uncommon powerful, but I had no idea they'd be this strong. Such wee young things, and they'd be fighting like this all this time. It's because they're young. They see fewer options for solving problems, and that makes them more sensitive and more straightforward. I mean, it's true. The older you are, the more you're thinking about the ideas and stuff, but then you're not as straightforward as the youth and stuff because you're so caught up in the plan but then when it comes to taking charge is where it comes to problem for them it's like as long as we got a plan we're good to go so they fight that's their choice to protect their family to prevent the loss of any more family family the crew of their ship to them that is their family Every one of them is an orphan. Thus, the bonds among them are more valuable to them than anything. Oh, man. No one's been in. And it's kind of wild because he might be he might be right. Because if you think about it, too. Shiki, of course. Rebecca. Homura. Vice. Hermit. It actually makes... Yeah, you know what? That's actually kind of wild. That actually makes a lot of, They are actually technically all orphans. Even if they weren't originally, at some point they became. So it's like a whole band. Yo, that, that's amazing. That's amazing, man. And Connor just getting hit the truth right there from uh, from Noah from, for all this. Clean and Jean, too, which is even crazier, too. Laguna. Oh, oh man. Oh, boy. I've been this this series. This flipping series, dude. I see now Rebecca and uh, Shiki making their run out. They all be orphans. Hey, Pino getting in the action too? Activating EMP. Let's go, my daughter. Ah, my gun, it's locked. Happy Blaster solo mode. Oh, you're about to get washed. Happy's about to wash some people, man. Let's go. You see the tech right now on the body starting to go in. Yo, you, you, yo. He's out here on this Frankie gimmick, man. Pulled out the little like guns and stuff. Bang. Shoots away at them and everything. And listen, man. Happy Shogun? Happy Shogun one day? We'll have to see. And Rebecca about to unleash the Cat Leaper. Whole oh, my. Yo. And she just kick it away. Boom, boom. Get it in with the sweet chin musics, man. Oh, yo. Best girl right there, man. Look. Homura is my, my girl. But let's be honest, man. That's our heroine right there, man. That is our female MC. You love to see. Yo! <laughs> oh my god! Yo! Yo! I'm like, yo, a true Katsune? Bruh. First, Homura. With the ether gear. 
Are you telling me we are a Kitsune gang? I mean, to be fair though, we got one as a fox. This has to be for a cat. But regardless, that's how you do it. You want you want to rock the fox and the cat? That's how you do it. Cause I don't know, man. There's the fox in the field about to go crazy. But anyways, look at that, bro. But wait, but that has to be overdrive. My brain literally just with one of these. That's her freaking over. You see what Mashima does when it comes to the woman? He decides that, oh, I'm, I'm going to do all these things right here. Just mess with Laz's mind. And then let him know after the fact that, guess what? She's doing overdrive. But he's going to be so focused in on what's happening right now in terms of appearance and everything that he's going to forget that she can do overdrive now. Oh my god, that makes me even more hype, man. Oh my god, dude. Oh man, no. Rebecca go. Rebecca go. Rebecca go. You're telling me, look now, we got the cat overdrive, the fox overdrive. We're, we just win. That's all I'm that's all we're doing. That's all we do. As Eden Zero fans, all we do is win. Simple as that. You can't ask for anything more, man. Overdrive, Monster Cat, Rude. <laughs> How is the connecting team losing to them? We should be able to see all their moves. Uh, you're fighting somebody who can be able to, to go back in time and check the moves and stuff. So, yeah, but listen, man. It's a, it, I'll say this. It's more so the headpiece than anything else. The, I mean, I'm not going to complain with the, the fit itself. The fit, the fit go kind of crazy. But, look, I, I'm here for all this. I'm here for all this. This is now. This is fire. Now we got we got ourselves a gold overdrive in the making. The answer is sip. Oh no! If, if I see oh, if Merc goes overdrive, I'm gonna lose my mind. The answer is simple. You see our movements, but you cannot handle them. And right away, Hermura. I mean, the back shot goes crazy, but he she just absolutely just decimates with the slice and dice. Gone. Hamura, man. My goat. Love to see it. Same Sam and Aji. These guys are bad news. Very well. I shall have to resort to you. <laughs> Shaky man, please. I have to protect this chair. I have to protect this chair. This chair's gonna go out the window one day, bro, because of you. Yo, my god. Yo. The man just pulled up, bro. You see, like, the little sparkles of, like, the, like, the debris or weed or whatever. And he just pulls up on Feather. Sorry, would you mind getting out of the way? Oh, hell no. Nah. Hell, man, yo. Feather's just like, huh, nutty? He's not in the location I foresaw. There's never been such a large disperse... Dis I can't even spell the word. Say the word. Dis dis whatever. There's a large thing, blank space before. See you later. Why would you say see you later? Oh yeah, I don't ever want to see her again. You say that, I, listen man. I, we still need somebody to cover up for Witch's position if it's not going to be clean. I'm still going to hold on to what I said last week. It will be something if we can convince Feather to leave the, the, uh, the Galactica because that will be crazy. But how likely, I don't know. Stop. As soon as she says that, the gravity comes and just stops her in place. I'm stuck. His gravity has pinned me to the ground. And the crew of Eden's making their escape afterwards now from Blue Garden. But I won't let you get away. My fleet has your ship surrounded. You will not be able to leave this planet. Jesus Christ, Feather. Look, the sneak up by Shiki was one thing, but now you agitated her, so she's about to go in. Emergency takeoff. I told you, we're surrounded. If we're going to force our, our way out of here, we're going to have to sink a few of their ships. And even if we do make it through, Feather ships are racer class, the fastest ships in the Union Army. You want to outrun the Union's fastest fleet without getting anyone hurt? Yo. Okay, Connor. Okay, you want to be the helmsman? You want to get us out of this position? Fair enough. Fair enough. 
That's a bit of a surprise, though. I thought he was going to stay back, but you know what? I think he now understands the ties of bonds and what it means to be a family after that Noah's speech. So, fair play to him. It'd be possible for me. Connor? How? Mr. Connor? Call me captain, if you please. Let us begin the mission to escape the Union Army's clutches. And that's the end of the chapter. Wow, man. Oh, boy. What a freak, bro. What? I don't know. 174 straight chapters in a row. Mashma has yet to miss. Like, let's, let, man. Now, we gotta recount this chapter. Because, look. The overdrive, obviously, from Rebecca was the big thing there. Because I was not actually anticipating her to do that. Because, obviously, we didn't see that really from Jane cleaning them. Uh, to go full out, like, in their, well, in their forms and all that. But, and especially with, like, Homer, I expect that if we were going to see the overdrive from Rebecca here, but we did, then she would have gone too. But no. That, that was, that's crazy. Like, all of them obviously showed off their own worth and everything in battle, in base form, which shows, like, how strong they become now, where they don't have to go into overdrive to meet, um, to be able to set it, like, you know, where the standard is and stuff for the army and everything. Like, they can hold their own without uh, going to the next tier, which is to be respected. But, man, that whole speech, though, from Noah to Connor was so good in regards to family and all of them. Like, yeah, they may not all be connected by blood, but they all, that's, but the, their connection, their bond is what makes them a family. And that to them is more valuable than anything that they have. So, I, I, man, I absolutely love that. But, no, nah, man, the overdrive itself from Rebecca I can't believe like I like I love the fact that it's post time like in the post time skip, in the three years she was able to get it because I would have been generally shocked if she didn't have it already. So this was a great time to actually introduce it. Now, how much better has she got in terms of leaping back in time? Have if she does use it because again we know the consequences of doing that and stuff, um, because of you know like the whole universe, the multiverse and stuff. <clears throat> but. Aside from that, man, look, as long as she knows how to read the moves and stuff for anyone, you can have Operation Hockey, you will not be hurt in a fight, okay? You will not be hurt in a fight. That much we can tell you. So, shout out to Rebecca, man. Now she's uh, she's really stepped up in terms of a combatant, you know, but, oh my God. That shaky moment, though, on Feather, like, this man pulled up with, like, all the energy in the world. And had her absolutely shook. And I loved it too because he put the hand on... That's the thing I, I didn't uh, take into account. He put the hand on the shoulder and put her in place. Like, do you know how crazy that is? He put one hand on one of the freaking... The Union Army's top soldiers. And you stay here. Right here. You are not You are not moving from this position. Absolutely mad. Right? But... This, I don't know, like, right now, this basically confirms now that Connor also is going to be staying with them for the long term. Now, do we get to know during the travels who exactly his daughter might be? Because, again, I, if the, if it is Feather, then it makes sense to kind of reveal that in this moment here. You know, in the next chapter or two, possibly. Or at least leave us a hint, and then we explore maybe later on after. But I feel like because of, like, the nature of where this arc is right now, outside of the stuff with Ziggy... It makes sense to kind of handle it now and then jump into the next parts afterwards and go from there. But, yeah, we basically got our helmsman of the crew. Doesn't have to always be with uh, Vice and stuff now. Because it was kind of crazy, like, how, you know, he was t like, temporarily taking care of stuff. Now we have to have a proper person that's in there, you know. But, again, I do want to see the possibility that somehow, some way, they can convince Feather to join. Because I think in terms of replacing Witch... They need someone within the four shining stars, at the very least, when they go up against the dark stars, to have enough. Like, Hamura herself is great. Ivory is great. Hermit is great. But the thing is, though, man, is that we need, like, that one more. I don't know if I can see Clean being that person just yet, even though she has her overdrive and she can grow over time and stuff, and she might have in those three years. But just to be on the safe side, if they can pull something off here, like, I would take it. It just means that it would have to be very convincing and it would have to also fall in line too with the fact that Connor could have that connection with Feather. So make up for lost time and then also change her views because now she sees after that the crew of Edens 
aren't this bad group that they've been painted to be just because of the fact that Shiki right now is currently one of like, you know, essentially like a freaking a warlord Yonko of the cosmos and stuff. So, but yeah, this was a great chapter we got this week. And luckily we have a chapter next week as well. No one must you, man. Look, you don't have to give him breaks. The guy just regenerates his health as he should. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below regarding the chapter this week. What do you think of the stuff that we got in it though? Like the stuff regarding Noah's speech afterwards with Connor did you like it or did you not like you know like like for me as someone who really likes how uh most stories handle in terms of like family bonds like just bonds in general and stuff I, it always will get to me if it's well done um the stuff afterwards with rebecca and overdrive were you surprised that we got it now instead of like during the fight with ziggy and everything personally i think it's better to get it now because if we have to wait until then and it's kind of like a convenience like oh she has a power now and now that she has it we can see that be fully displayed later on in lenar and stuff and then Again, there are things I want to say too as well. Do you guys believe that Feather has a chance of being Connor's daughter? And what are the chances you would give now of Feather possibly making like a U-turn on how she feels about the crew of Edens and eventually ends up joining with them at some point? If you think that's a possibility or not, let me know down in the comments. And then if you think of anyone else that could be the daughter of Connor, whether it be Amira or whoever else it may be, let me know down in the comments. Like the video if you enjoy, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new here. If you want to be part of the weekly experience when it comes to my coverage of Eden Zero week in, week out, subscribe if you haven't already. Click on the bell, Shandora, so that they with everything that goes on the channel. With that being said, I will catch you guys next Tuesday for the next installment in Hero Monstrum's up and coming hit series, man. And look, we are feasting in many regards before we get to Leonard. And then probably we're going to be in some turmoil and stuff. But for now, we move. Commodore Les signing off. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, take care. Going crazy, yeah, we going crazy. I'm with the team, yeah, yeah, we going crazy.